We have been looking at sanctification. We've been looking at a life that is changed and different once we come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And I just want to look tonight at this thought. Um, and I think once we start November, we're going to be shifting down our Tuesday evening service. We'll be having black light practice at the beginning of November. I want to really invite everybody to still come, even if you're not involved with black light. If you still want to come for the fellowship and for we can use extra hands and uh, also just if you want to come in and pray, um, we can play, place places of prayer uh, for folks. But just so you know. Um, but anyway, turn with me to the book of Philippians, chapter number 2. Philippians, chapter number 2. I'm going to do it a little bit different. I'm going to look at the Word of God and maybe look at it uh, in a uh, kind of an expositor style where we kind of stop and talk as we read this. And then once we're done, then uh, just a brief overview of it as we look at just really taking on the attitude of Christ and what that means because we see the attitude of Christ um, laid out before us here in Philippians chapter number 2. So how do we make the attitude of Christ, um, how do we put that same attitude in where we are? And I really find that challenging. Um, you know, there are things that happen in my life today that had they happened 20 years ago, I would have responded differently. But I think because of the grace of God, God says, is that really a big deal? You know, is, is that really, I, I, I'm just thankful for that. That's what the grace of God does. And so it's putting on the attitude of Christ in our life. And so uh, here the writer says, if there, if there be therefore any consolation, uh, if there be any comfort, uh, uh, if there be any encouragement, uh, and that's really what that word consolation is saying. If there be any consolation in Christ. Now, um, do you think that when you read this, do you think that the translation of this is a question mark if there is any? Now, when we look there, it looks that way. But if we understand the interpretation and we go back to the original text, it gives us the idea of this. Since there is consolation in Christ. Amen. Since there is encouragement in Christ. You know what that means? The encouragement is that there's hope for every one of us and help for every one of us because of Christ. There is consolation tonight. Amen. No question, no doubt, there is consolation. If, if, if any comfort of love. Amen. So there is comfort of love. And the good news is this. It's a God love. It's not a human love. It's not a man love. It is a God love. Oftentimes, man love comes with conditions and requirements and stipulations attached. And it is limited to time and space. However, God's is not with any type of, uh, of stipulation attached or any type of requirements, and it's not limited to time or space. The Bible says, if any fellowship of the Spirit. Amen. This is awesome tonight because there is fellowship with the Spirit of God. How many of you can say, I've experienced that fellowship? And even experience that fellowship today. The fellowship that is of Christ. Amen. The Spirit of God. Amen. So we know tonight that there is, there is encouragement in Christ. There is unconditional love in God. And there is this fellowship, amen, with the Spirit of God, which is part of the tripart nature of God. We're going to be looking at all three of the tripart natures of God and how that is tonight when we look at the attitude of Christ. Amen. So remember this, that the Spirit of God works in conjunction with the, the, the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, and now God the Spirit, and we have fellowship with that. It makes real the Father. It makes real the Son and the work that the Son did on the cross. And so he goes on down to say, fulfill ye 
my joy. Amen. The spiritual growth that should be in us is the joy of the Lord. It's spiritual growth, putting on the attitude of Christ. Amen. That ye be like-minded. That ye be like-minded. It means having unity of the mind and of the heart. Do you know what uh, a like-minded is? Is that we all have the mind of Christ. We all have different personalities. We all have different uh, uh, interests. We all have uh, uh, different ways that we do things, methods. It doesn't matter. The thing that matters when we come together is that we have the mind of Christ. I think one of the ways that we can best look at this is we come to the hot lights. And we all have different ideas. We come from different schedules. We come from different things. Uh, Sister Dot, I don't have a drop in the bucket or worth of artistic ability that she has. I'm glad that she has a different mind and a different way because she has brought us up about 1,500 notches on black lights. Amen. Uh, but when we come together, even though we're all different, even though we're all different, it doesn't matter. We come together in like-mindedness. We are doing this for the glory of Christ. Right? Amen. So when we come together as a body of believers, as diverse as we are, even though we're saved, we're still different. We're not cookie cut out molds. Amen. If you all want to come on a nice pink shirt, Brother Doug, the church like this, you can. You can, Brother Craig and Brother Justin. You can. You can, Brother John. You can, Brother John. <laughs> but we're still different, right? We're still different. But the greatest thing is, as it would come together, we have the mind of God. And that's putting on the attitude of Christ. I love our services. Just when the presence of God begins to move, it doesn't matter who He uses. It's that that person is willing to be used, and that we all are in agreement to what God is doing. It's the mind of Christ, and we have to work to put it on. It is that ye be like-minded, having the same love, the God kind of love that's unconditional and breaks down all types of boundaries. Do you know what? That's when older people take an interest in younger people, and younger people take an interest in older people, and rounder people take an interest in square-looking people, and, and, and whatever, you know? Just everybody looking so different, and being so different, but being like-minded in the things of God. That's sanctification. That's sanctification. We can make this work because we have the mind of Christ. Being of one accord and of one mind. You know what? Do you know what the greatest object of Jesus Christ was when he came to earth? I'll talk more about this in a little bit. He did a lot of things. He did a lot of things. But there was one reason why he and that was the cross. You and I do a lot of things in life. Some of you are grandparents. Some of you are parents of grown children. Some of you are parents of little children. Some of you are, 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 are working a job that I could never do. Some of you are taking care of things that I don't have to take care of. We all, but we all have one object. That is to live our life for the Lord. And that needs to be the attitude that we take on. That means we can take an interest in others and we can love others. That means we can come together and we can work together in unity to build the kingdom of God because we come with a cross in mind. Doesn't matter if we're rich. It doesn't matter if we're poor. It doesn't matter if we have a great big education or we have little formal education. It doesn't matter. We come together with the cross and Jesus Christ as our number one mission. 
Bible goes on down to say, let nothing be done in strife or vain glory. It means forming different sides, forming different opinions. Uh, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other, others better than themselves. What does that mean? It means taking on the viewpoint of others the same as you take on your own viewpoint. I can help you in this. I can do this. We can work together to get it done no matter what it is for the kingdom of God. Because as different as we are, once again we come together and we are like-minded in Christ. And once again, I think right now we can use black light. Amen. You know why we're doing black light? Not to have the prettiest props, although I think we will. Not to have the most uh, 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 practiced and together uh, 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 presentation. I believe that we'll do our best and it will be great. But that's not the reason why we come. The reason why we come is because we want others to see Jesus Christ. And we have a mission. Amen. We want them to know that Jesus loves you the way that he loves me. And he died for you. And the purpose of this is we want you to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Because the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ is the center of our life. Amen. <clears throat> he goes on down to say, let every man... Look not on every man his own things, but every man also on the things of others, taking that interest. Let this mind be in you. It's the mind of emptying everything else out. When Jesus came to earth, could he have been distracted? Could he have been distracted when he was tempted in the wilderness? He was tempted. But what was his mind? It was empty of everything else but to do the Father's will. And he knew he was called to the cross. And the cross was the center of life came. It really was. It really was. If there would be no cross, there would be no payment of, of, of the penalty of sin. And man would die and go to hell because they would die for the price of sin. But he came and he was not distracted. He came to pay the price for sin. Though the Bible says, who being, uh, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ. Amen. It was the supreme thought of his was a cross. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery, robbery to be equal with God. Equality refers here to him in his, uh, in his position in, in the Trinity. But, but, but he is taking a different position. Amen. But made himself of no reputation. Here he is, and he took upon him the form of a servant. Here it is. Uh, 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 how, how do I want to say this? He did not. He did not leave his deity, but his deity took on a different form, so that you and I may know salvation. He is no longer in heaven. But now he takes on the form of flesh. Brother Craig, he didn't feel like it was robbery to come to earth and robe himself in flesh. Because Brother Doug, he came with a mission in mind. He was still God. Brother Justin, he, he, did, not, he did not feel like it lowered him. He was still the, the same part of the Trinity that he always was. But he took upon himself the form of a servant, the Bible says, and was made in the likeness of man. You see, when he, 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 he laid aside his expression of deity, of what he looked like, 
Because now he, rubbed, he was never rubbed in flesh before. So his expression of deity, but he did not lay aside his possession of deity. He's not looking the same as he did before because he took upon himself flesh. Amen. His expression looks different, but his possession of who he was was no different. He was still the, the possession of deity. And the Bible says, and he was and being found in the fashion of a man. Here he was, denotes Christ in the eyes of man. He humbled himself. He was brought low, but willingly, and became obedient unto death. You see, he was still the master of death. Even though he became obedient to death and subjected himself to death. Think about that for a minute. He was still the master of death. He was still greater than death. Even though he lowered himself and subjected himself to death. Do you know why he did it? For you and for me and for all of humanity. And who are we to think that we cannot forgive? And who are we to think that we should not take on the mind of Christ and love others as ourselves? Because Christ did. How my glory is that tonight? You talk about living a sanctified life. I am no better than the worst sinner out there. And I need to show them love. And then to the church as well, how much more should I be showing them love as we both exercise the mind of Christ in our life? It's a challenge tonight. Even the death of the cross. It was a disgrace. It was degradation. But it was necessary for men to be redeemed. The death, this type of death alone, would pay the terrible, terrible sin debt and do so in its totality. And Christ said, I will be willing to die that death. We'll talk more about what that death means. We'll look at Deuteronomy in just a little bit. But let's continue to look through the scriptures. Wherefore godly God also has highly exalted him, gave him a place of supreme majesty. He has always been the creator. Jesus Christ was there at creation. He's always been the creator. But now, he becomes the Savior. Wow. Jesus. Lord, call him Jesus, for he shall save his people. Savior. Amen. And given him a name which is above every name. Amen. Uh, uh, he is Lord, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow in the sphere of that name. It, 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 it entails all things because of the result of the cross and what he did on the cross. And he kept the cross at the center of his life. Even when he took on flesh, he kept the cross at the center. Even when he was misunderstood by religious leaders, when he was misunderstood by his friends and those closest to him, even when he was misunderstood, uh, his mom didn't understand all of it, yet he kept the cross at the center of it all because he knew that that was what his purpose in coming here was for is to give his life on the cross because it's the only thing that can save mankind from their sin. And, uh, and, 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 
that every tongue should confess that Christ is Lord. That Lord here means Master. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Father acknowledges Christ and what He has done on the cross. And so when we look here, what does it mean to, to walk like Christ and have an attitude of Christ and talk like Christ? Hey, and what, what does that mean? The very nature of Christ. I think that we see in these scriptures that it is obedience that is voluntary. You see, in, in verse number 7, the Bible says, And he took upon himself the form of a servant. Do you know what that type of servant is? That is a bond servant or a love servant. He comes to serve and love. Not because of duty or responsibility, but because the Son of God loved. He came to serve and give himself. Obedience. He was willing. What did Jesus say? He said, no man. In John chapter number 10, verse number 18. I'm going to paraphrase it in my own words. He says, no man takes down my life and take my life. But I willingly lay down. Willing. You know what our attitude should be? Is that we willingly give and love and serve. Remember what Paul said, I've quoted it thousands probably of times in my years of pastoring here. He said, gladly will I spend and be spent for you. Though the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. It's not about getting a reciprocating love. It's about loving others as Christ loved us. And having the mind of the Spirit and the unity of the Spirit to show love. So it's sanctification is that nature of Christ and, and, and the nature of his obedience. But also in the extent of his obedience. You see, when we look at Christ's life, we look at the Gospels and I love them. And I do believe that the Gospel of John probably, I don't know to me, is my favorite Gospel. We probably all have one that's but, but he just opens up so very much for us as he teaches about who Christ is. So I read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and I read the rest of the New Testament that gives us the examples and, and gives us the knowledge of the New Testament church. But Jesus didn't come just to teach or to be an example of that. That wasn't why he came. And so he could have said, wait, this is why I come, to show you all about who God is. But the extent of his obedience, he showed that the primary reason why he came was to be obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Our life should be to the extent of showing the love of God even to the death of us. Our own nature of who we are and how we respond and being more interested in ourselves than in the needs of others, that's not how it is anymore. Our interests have changed because Christ has changed us. And because of His obedience and the extent of it, our life is challenged and changed and the extent of our obedience is reflected in. We see how obedient Christ was. I'm going to be that obedient as well. See, even the death on the cross, there's a few things that we should understand about the death on the cross. And that is this, is that Jesus died and accursed death. Would you turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter number 21? But I found this to be a blessing. As I look at this, Deuteronomy 21, and let's start reading in verse number 22. If any man have committed a sin worthy of death, and he be put to death, and you hang him on a tree, 
His body shall not remain all night upon the tree, but ye shall in any wise bury him that day, for he who is hanged is accursed of God. That your land be not defiled, which the Lord your God gives you for an inheritance. See, his body wasn't to be there overnight because he was, he was not only dying this terrible death that was upon a tree, but it was to say, he's cursed of God. <coughs> I mean, they made him look the worst of the worst. You understand what the cross was? I mean, way back in Deuteronomy, here it is. Uh, they didn't understand, but many years even prior, Brother Eli, uh, uh, through a brazen serpent, God was giving a picture and a type of his son. Uh, when he'd be lifted up, amen, that, that, that men, when they looked upon him, would be healed. And so here he is. This, this is the biggest curse that we can give anybody. And we crucify him on the cross. I mean, we're making him look religiously bad. We're making him look morally bad. We're making him look ethically bad. And we're giving him the most brutal death that we can possibly give. So on every level, Brother Doug, he is crucified. It is just demeaning, Brother Justin, to him. I mean, demeaning. But here it is. Christ was obedient to the cross. And he died an accursed death so that he could pay what we owed. He died, this is for Tina, because we deserve that. That's the only type of death that would ever, ever be able to pay the penalty for the curse of sin. And, 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 and Sister Doc, everything that you and I and all humanity have, has ever done, it's the only death. And yet he was willing to be obedient, Brother John, to that because he said, I'm putting myself aside and I'm allowing myself to take on the humility of being a servant and I'm going to go to the cross. Do you know what it's about? About. It's about letting Christ be glorified, amen, and the knowledge of the love of Jesus Christ being exemplified through, to all the world through us. So no matter where you and I walk and the work that we do, it has to be unified because it's not about any of us. You know what? Black light is not about me. Black light's not about any one person. Black light will wind up being about Jesus Christ because we put our life together. Now think about this. That's just one example of what we're doing together as a church. Because if we function as a body where the Spirit of God is moving and where Christ is exemplified and men and women come to this church and we fall in love so much with God that everything about our life, we want it to be God honored. God is honoring this church as a body. That's what I want. I don't ever need my name on my keys. I don't need to be known for great things. But if this church right here can be known in the northern Dolphin and around the globe as folks who love God and is working together for the kingdom of God, then we can. And he died this shameful death. See, if you even read in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter number 1, you know, to the Greeks and, 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 and well, I don't even read the term there for the sake of my just holding it right. Um, 1 Corinthians 1, 23, but we preach Christ crucified to the Jews a stumbling block and to the Greeks foolishness. You see, to a lot of people, it, 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 it's foolish because that was a shameful death. We look at the cross as an emblem of our salvation and what Christ has done for us. But when you ask the Greeks, that's foolishness. Only the worst of the worst now like that. And you see, you would ask, uh, 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 if, if, if you 
ask the Jews, it's a stumbling block. But to those who know the mind of God and the obedience of Christ, you know it's love. And it's purest, richest form. And he died a painful death. Think about that. The whipping, the whipping beyond all recognition. The crown of thorns that was placed on his brow. The hanging and openness as he hung there. The most painful death that you could ever imagine. Some of you have been there. You've seen your loved ones as they've been on the ventilator, or maybe they're gasping for their breath, or maybe they're groaning. It's disheartening to us, isn't it? We don't like to see our loved ones in that place. Maybe particularly as they make their way to death. But imagine. This is my primary focus. My focus is upon making a way of salvation. And this is the only way. So I will be obedient. When we struggle with the in our life, that we know it's not pleasing to God, and we say, This is tough. We have to keep the cross in the We have to keep the is doing in our life and mind. When the path that we take is not the one that we would want, but God says this is the best path for my plan to be fulfilled, we need to say yes to me. I'll be with you. But God, do I really have to do that to serve you? I really like this crutch. I really like this sin. I really like holding on and nurturing this attitude. God said it's wrong. Get your eye off of everything else and be like Christ. Focused on what the Father has called you to How did he do it? Certainly through the Spirit of God. Because the presence of God was upon him. But did we say we also have that same fellowship with the Spirit of God? So we have the same ability that Christ had. But we also have the victory of the cross. We can make it. And that's what living a sacrificed life is about. But Jesus died this vicarious death. What does it mean? That vicarious means that we may experience the power of God unto salvation. So you see, the reason why Jesus did what he did is because he wanted the supreme glory to go to God. In what you do in your life, why do you do it? If it's the attitude of Christ that we should be putting on, it should be <coughs> the supreme glory of everything in our life. You know, some people ask me, some days, I'll be honest with you, Bo John, on my job in the public, I can't get the brass out of the barn. There's things I feel like that. But there are others that just think that no one else knows how to draw the money. There are no more four people in my life. But they're like, how did you get good? Well, number one, probably years of practice calls. But number two is this. That is the worst thing I hated doing on my job when I got employed 23 years ago. I hated it. I hated it. Hated it. And then I knew I got to do this if I need a job. And I need this job. So I said, God, you got to help me like it. And you got to help me do that. You know why? Because God answered my prayer. And I told him. as a good banker because the Lord helps him. Do you know what I'm going to create? Your business is doing well because before you stepped out and went out full time, you felt the presence of God say, now's the time. 
So it's saying, whatever I do, I'm doing for the glory of God. Or the, being a, a prison guard, and being where you are, you probably put up with a lot of stuff that I wouldn't want to to put up with. But I believe that you can be the best that's in Dalton County. Because you do your job differently. You do it for the glory of God. And Sister Beth, you make a difference in William's Valley, not because of what you do alone, but because you do it for the glory of God. And so they said, she's the best. She's the best you want her in the classroom. When we take it on to say, this isn't about me, but this is a 